All right, you ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Before we get back to the chart, I want to take you back to the candy activity. Now, I want you to remember what those three folks that were selling the, the Jolly Ranchers were trying to do. Because I let those guys talk to each other, and I didn't let anybody else talk to each other. Uh, and if you remember, they were trying to get that price of those Jolly Ranchers nice and high. But in 3A especially, London, uh, he basically lied. Uh, he said, yeah, I'll go to a high price, but then he, he slipped underneath. And it caused a lot of confusion and chaos in that group. And so if you think about what happens in those small groups, uh, when those people had to decide what price they were going to write down, what was going through their head? If you had London in your group, you were thinking about what he was going to do and how he was probably going to backstab you. And so that influenced your choice. In groups where I've had three people who are very who trust each other and they feel confident that the other people are not going to backstab them, they make a different choice than those people that were in London's group and they knew they had a backstabber. Uh, the backstabbers make for better uh, better classes by by all means, but they change the way people make decisions. So you notice in oligopolies. You don't think just about yourself, you think about what the other guy is going to do. So we're going to practice that here in a second. So we got Jack and Jill here. They got two choices, no pump or buy the pump. I'm going to ask you a simple question. If Jack chooses to buy the pump, what should Jill do? <clears throat> well, here's how you do it. If you think you know, that's excellent. Take a second if you think you know here. But I'm going to show you how. So if Jack chooses to buy a pump, it's got to be in this column here, all right? This column over here, this is when Jack is not buying a pump, so we ignore it. And I'll just kind of step in the way here. So we're seeing what Jill can do. Remember, Jill has two choices. She can go no pump or she can buy the pump. Well, look at her numbers. She has one and she has two. Which would you choose if you knew that Jack was going to buy the pump and you were Jill? I'm going for two dollars, not one dollar. I'm going for two. So she can only get that by buying the pump. So if she knows that Jack's gonna buy, she's gonna buy. Let me try it, let me ask you a different one. <clears throat> if instead now, let's say that uh, Jill, we know what Jill's gonna do. We're gonna ask, what would Jack do? If Jill goes no pump, what should Jack do? Pause for a second, see if you can figure it out. What should Jack do if Jill goes no pump? <clears throat> well, here's how you do this. So Jill's going no pump. So that means you can automatically ignore everything down here. Because this, all these boxes down here, is if Jill buys the pump. She's not buying the pump. She's going without. So we're up top here. So if you're Jack, you got two choices. You can go no pump, you can get four. You can buy the pump, get six. What would you do? I'm going six. If I'm Jack and I know that Jill's going no pump. That's how you do it. Uh, and this goes right along with what's on your worksheet. So now give it a try. If you get confused, Come back, watch the video, watch how I did it, all right? Uh, I'm going to show you one more video. They set up this payoff matrix a little bit differently. All right, if you have questions, let me know. Best of luck. Thank you, guys. Have a good evening.